good. Well, um, this is a celebration of Bill Jones's retirement. Uh, but part of this is the story of Texas Baptist Committed and the fact that Bill uh, led to, uh, this Texas Baptist Committed group uh, all the way to the end of its existence. Uh, there are a few things to say about this that I think we should recognize. Uh, the first is uh, how Bill Brewster reminded me uh, that Texas Baptist Committed uh, started with Charles Wade and Bill Brewster in his study. Uh, what year would you think that would have been, Bill? 85. 1985. They each had to go out and raise $50,000, which they did. George, let me just say, Charles Wade told me last night mm -hmm. he really wanted to do yeah. it. He had to get his daughters to get their Right, well, uh, really it, it's a good thing for uh, us to take care of our daughters, and uh, Charles couldn't be here because of that. But... In any case, uh, originally, many of us are old enough uh, to remember Baptist Committed before Texas Baptist Committed in, in terms of it being uh, the organization that tried its best to wrest back uh, stewardship of the Southern Baptist Convention uh, from those who had uh, dedicated themselves to, uh, to taking it. And uh, we failed. Uh, but Texas Baptist Committed continued beyond that effort, uh, and the creation of CBF, of course, uh, was that which succeeded Baptist Committed's effort. Texas Baptist Committed uh, was deliberately intent on uh, trying to maintain uh, a fair uh, and equitable uh, Baptist General Convention of Texas uh, beyond the Southern Baptist Wars and to say this would be a big tent for everyone. And for many years that was uh, the case and it, it was a very successful work uh, and after the initial uh, person who uh, worked for uh, Texas Baptist Committed, Neil Rogers, was only a year and then David Curry came on and David uh, went from part-time to full-time quickly. Uh, it, and Bill said that uh, it's, it's easy to do when you raise your own salary. Isn't that right, David? Uh, but in any case, uh, that, that work continued for a good long while, and most of us are keenly aware of what it was and why it was. Uh, but uh, Bill then succeeded uh, David in this work and continued until uh, it was time to say enough. And uh, sometimes, you know, Baptists don't do that very well. And we don't do it often enough, is to say enough. And I'll say a little more about that at the end of this time, um, but that's enough for now. Uh, for now, I want to call David Curry and Susie Painter and Charlie Johnson to join me up here. And each of you find your chair. And Susie, I think we all know you should be in the middle. Uh, because each has some reflections about Bill and about this work that I think are important. I was telling you the video and pointed out to kind of somebody doing that. Yeah, in fact, I've got two microphones on. I feel like a West Texas uh, sharpshooter or something here, you know. Uh, anyway, um, this should pick you all up okay, I suppose. Um, let's start, Susie, with you and, and, and talk a little bit about when, when you think about Bill, I know what we've talked about is the significance of one voice, one person, and what a difference it makes. Well, let me begin by saying that I think of Bill as the honorable layperson leader. So let me talk about that for just a moment. Bill, to me, and I'm going to read this title so I get it exactly right is a populous deltoid. That's the official name of a cottonwood tree. <laughs> when you think about the landscape of Baptist life, it's like there is this meandering river, this meandering river of organizations, of opportunities, of congregations, and lay people while lay people are like the populous deltoid, mm. 
the deep-rooted, fast-growing cottonwood tree. And if you're on the hills and you come down to the plain and you're looking for rivers, what do you look for? Hmm. These lines of cottonwood trees that point out to you where the river is. Bill, you have been that kind of populous deltoid. Mm -hmm. The co cottonwood trees are the fastest growing trees in North America. Amen. And if you know cottonwood trees, you know that they not only congregate along the edges of rivers like you have, you've been a part of different organizations that have been a part of our story as Texas Baptists. Never saying enough of the river, but just saying, where's the next place to go? Where's the next place to go? How do we root the next tree? One of the things we know about cottonwoods, too, is that they're, they provide great shade. Great shade. Comfort. A place for meeting. Uh, Native Americans used cottonwood trees as meeting places. And historically, if you study Native American tribes, they gathered under the shade of cottonwood trees because of the comfort and because of the stature of the tree. And so I give you, you know, my deep regard as individual, as an example of a layperson who's been that kind of symbol to us. And I'm so grateful to you. And I love that, uh, the thought, in fact, I would say to many of you in this room, I mean, how many people in this room are lay people? Oh, man. Amen. Well, there's our forest. Amen. Oh, cottonwoods. Amen. It's, it's, it's probably worth at this moment saying we as Baptists all are lay people. <laughs> Clergy are merely a subset of the laity. Uh, and, an in, big, and an incidental a one. different category, <laughs> but I know it's a word game, but it is a meeting about Baptist principles, isn't it? Something like that? All right. Charlie, you were on the board. What was it like being a board member with Bill? Oh, my goodness. Bill Jones is a great servant leader. Humble, hardworking, dedicated Long hours at low pay. Do I hear an amen, Bill? Um, Bill Jones is a delight to work with. And I have the distinct privilege of working with Bill through Pastors for Texas Children because he's one of our fine board members now. And I had the good sense by the leadership of the Holy Spirit to get him lassoed in early on. George, you and I were talking earlier about how new expressions of witness are an outgrowth of, of our friends who have come before us. And Bill has come before us with great dedication. Um, David and, and you and I and Susie and many others have been colleagues in crime for a long time. And, uh, and when Bill took over, you know, there was a little sort of regrouping and a little huddling up, but Bill recovered very quickly. And Lance already said it. Bill, you really carried some wooden water in some difficult spaces. Needs to be said. You know, our Baptist communion in Texas is in transition. Susie's one of the people in the world that reminds me, Charlie, don't burn any bridges. We're not going to burn any bridges. We're not going to shut any doors. But we're in a real sort of identity, identity confusion, aren't we, Bill? And you have been one of our leaders quietly, humbly, to go, as Lance said, and represent us in some difficult conversations. We thank you for that. There are lots of people in this room. I know we're all feeling this. I just want to say it. There are lots of great leaders in this room who have been faithful for a long time that only the Lord knows about, that aren't going to be on any platform or any dais or receive any recognition. I think there's power in this room. 
And I think there's real power in the Baptist voluntary witness to Christ without any institutional trapping or political power. Christ in our heart. This church represents that. Baylor University represents that. I just got a name some. Broadway Baptist and Trinity Baptist and Second Baptist Lubbock represents that. And all my congregations are represented here. Jim Hancock's over here. Jim's brother Jerry was our first musician at Second Baptist, Jim. So the great cloud of witnesses. And with that, enough, George, enough. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. David really built the organizational structure of Texas Baptist Committed. And uh, I know, David, that uh, back in the years when we were counting votes, and man, you count votes. Um, I know you'd, you'd have hard numbers, and John Ball would send you back to get twice as many. Uh, but uh, those, those were fun days, frustrating days, days of good work, but days that uh, really still matter. What are your reflections and uh, when you think about the handoff to Bill? Tell us more what you think. Well, let, let me go back a second to kind of the start of, I was actually hired in 1988. Okay. Before Richard Jackson lost in San Antonio, if he actually lost. Uh, Speaking of and, uh, yeah, <laughs> Hanging chads. Well, they're, they're, they're no, hanging. it was the Electoral College. Yeah. <laughs> it was the, uh, so, and we <laughs> stayed through, uh, 1990, and then I went part-time, and uh, I was actually in San Antonio, and Bill Brewster was chair of Baptist Committee, and Bill called and said, will you go full-time? They've hired Perry Ellis, a retired missionary, and I said yes under two conditions. You pay me $3,000 a month, and you let me live in San Angelo, <laughs> and I said, will you do that? And he said, I don't know. We don't have that kind of money. And so I said, well, if I can raise that kind of money, will you pay me $3,000? <laughs> he said, okay. So we moved to San Angelo. I wrote a letter, put Bill's name on it, and we raised $10,000 the first month. And I said, well, this works. And then everything else was like Wendell Berry said about one of his characters, whatever good happened, he got there by accident and by mistake. <laughs> and when all of you people sent money in that were lay people, I thought, well, I should put you on an advisory board <laughs> because you're the contact from that church, like First Baptist Houston, Second Baptist Houston, Park City, uh, First Baptist Dallas, uh, Prestonwood, Dallas. We got votes from all those places. Don't because First Baptist Earth. Well, Earth was Earth. there. We, yes. the, Earths were, the Earths were really important because they really came. So that's kind of how that happened. And I do have to tell one Bill Brewster story. Back in that day, we had a chairman's letter column. So I would write a column for Bill and send it to him, say, approve this or change it up however you want to. And this is really early. This is like 93. Bill calls me and says, where in the world is my column? My phone is ringing off the wall. What in the hell did you have me say? <laughs> now, that's a true story, isn't it, Bill? Because I had written some stuff and Bill hadn't bothered to really read it. <laughs> <laughs> and now he was anxious to find a copy. But, and so the lay people really made this. Bill Jones and I became friends when he was in a church that was moving more and more to fundamentalism. And that's when Bill first called me. And it really changed both of our lives. Uh, for many years, Phil Strickland uh, was my editor. Phil is the person that I would write an article, send it to Phil. Phil would call and say, I feel the same way you do, but you know you can't publish that. And I said, no, but it sure felt good to read it, right? <laughs> and then he would clean it up and it would go. Well, when Phil died, that's when Lance is telling stories. There were some not so good articles that got floated around out there. And so Bill stepped forward to be my editor. And Bill is a marvelous editor. And what y'all don't know is I was published in something called the San Angelo Live last Thursday morning, which is an online newsletter, newspaper that supposedly goes out to 80,000 people. I wrote a marvelous article on Tuesday night. Did you say something yourself? And I thought, 
This is ready for publication. There's no reason to send this to Bill Jones. I did. Bill sent it back twice as good as it was before <laughs> I wrote it. Bill continues to edit me yes. once a month yes. to this day. Yes. And I do not pay him for that, son. Did you pick up the pace of their little bills a little bit more? Uh, and so that's the relationship Bill and I have continued to have. He edited me forever, but he brought a real joy to my life as well because I became a part of his family. It was at Travis's wedding uh, and other things, and, and it's just a very special. You know, when I lost Phil, th that was extremely difficult and always will be. But, but Bill stepped into that void as a, you know, when I left Baptist Committed, the first phone call I made besides Gary Elliston was to Bill Jones to talk about that. And uh, for him to step in and, and carry it on the way he did, I didn't need to do it anymore because the fundamentalists had quit fighting. And if y'all don't know me real well, I, I, I'm real good at fighting and I'm not real good at being consensus building at times. And so Bill was a better role for that because that formed Southern Baptist of Texas. And so it was a perfect transition to someone that was very gifted and he did it for much less pay than I did, uh, much less reward from other people uh, than I got. And, and he did it extremely well, Bill, and I'm very, very proud of him. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. We wanted you to see them sitting side by side up here because uh, they have worked side by side in so many ways with Bill over time. And they also represent not just past work, but work that has been spawned by Texas Baptist Committed. I mean, one of the things to keep in mind, I think, about this is though Texas Baptist Committed is no longer uh, itself, uh, there is a sense of if a seed falls in the ground and dies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then so much more can grow yes. as a result of it. And there's a certain sadness that comes with any organization saying, our time has come. Uh, we have to acknowledge that the work we had to do has come to an end. But what we've seen is that it lives on in all these other areas, uh, in CBF, in Fellowship Southwest, in Pastors for Texas Children, uh, in CBF Texas, in our schools, Truett and Logston and, uh, and, and, and elsewhere in, in the state. So we're just grateful that that's true. It, it always astonished me as we worked with Texas Baptist Committed that we were thought of as a sort of progressive or liberal avant-garde group of Baptists. Uh, it's true that those terms are relative, but if you really think about who Texas Baptist Committed was, it was always rooted in historic Baptist principles and ideas and practices. I, I was um, I was reading up on the father of modern conservatism, uh, who is Edmund Burke. Uh, Edmund Burke uh, is, you know, one, one would think that he was against change, but he actually believed that history is moving progressively according to the hand of providence. He just actually thought that it shouldn't move according to abstract principles, but it should actually move uh, based upon a kind of organic development that should happen out of real people's lives uh, and rooted in principles. Now, we, we quote people and don't always know who we're quoting, but do you realize that uh, although George Santayana was, is always attributed to this quotation, it was Edmund Burke who said, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Edmund Burke, often misattributed as a matter of fact. This one caught my attention though too. He said that P. 
people will not look forward to, pro to posterity who never look backward to their ancestors. Texas Baptist Committed was devoted to who Baptists are and have been historically and not letting us forget that. Bill Jones came by that honestly. His father, Jace Jones, worked for the Home Mission Board and was one of the most gentle souls who did interfaith dialogue back at times when Southern Baptists cared to reach out to people of other religions like that, not only to convert them, but to listen to them and to learn from them. Uh, that didn't go well for him at the end of his career, but it was the kind of patient approach to people that made Bill who he was and made him who he was for Texas Baptist Committed also. So that when things changed, they wouldn't change willy-nilly. They would actually change in a way that was rooted in our history, that would bear the marks of who we have been so that there's a recognizable continuity across time. Just because Texas Baptist Committed is finished doesn't mean the work that was done through Texas Baptist Committed is finished. It lives on. Uh, whenever I think about these times, like Curry, I want to get weepy thinking about um, the, the man who was whispering in all of our ears so very often, Phil Strickland. Uh, Phil couldn't, he couldn't deliver his final message at the Texas Baptist Committed breakfast back in 2005, I believe it was, because he was so ill. But he asked me to do it, and this is some of the words toward the very end that I think are pertinent to us tonight. He said, we desperately need a theology of enough. We are stewards, not owners, of what we have, at least in Christian teaching. So do we have any walls around what we will spend on ourselves? Do we have any sense of enough for ourselves? That's where the prophets will emerge. Uh, but what about one more? Denominations. Should they take risk and speak prophetically or declare that the only real role of the denomination is meeting the needs of the churches who are members of it. To me, the answer is easy. Meeting the will of churches, vital as it is, comes in behind one other, listening for and meeting the will of God. What trumps, sorry, but it, it was years ago. What, what trumps the prophetic role in denominations is fear of financial loss. And the lack of understanding what crosses they are willing to die on, if any. What is so compelling that a denomination will stand there and ignore the consequences? Do we know the answer to that question? The question must be asked of lay people and pastors and churches. Bill Jones is a layman who asked that question, who asked it enough that he made all the rest of us ask that question. And we're here tonight because we are part of the answer, still. Thank you, Bill, for all you did for Texas Baptist Committed and for everyone in this room, not only in the past, but for all that is to come still. God bless you. Thank you. I am remiss if I don't introduce Charlie McLaughlin, who was associate at Baptist Committed for okay. many years. Charlie, Charlie stand good up. to see you back there. Thank you. Charlie's also my cousin. His mama and my mama were sisters. <laughs> and he's a brilliant yeah, man. He did uh -huh. a wonderful job for us. So thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, Lance.